I'm back with another highly underrated feature in Bravo Studio, the state pages. And don't tell me you've tried them in every way. Trust me, you didn't. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start off by explaining what state pages are. And for that, we're going to have to have a look at APIs first. Next, we're going to have a look at the actual Bravo tags that we can insert into our Figma file. And after that, we're going to import that into Bravo, of course. Because it can be tricky to see if the state pages are working correctly, this video has its own test section. And we're going to finish off by having a look at some sample use cases to give you some inspiration. An API always returns a status code. And that status code is a three-digit number. There are tons of these statuses out there. A nice website to give you an overlook would be http.cat. We're not going to work through all of them, but it's useful to know some common numbers. For example, 200 is a perfectly fine request. 401 means that the authorization failed. So if you're working with Airtable, for example, that could mean that you're using the wrong bearer key. Something that you've probably already seen on websites is the 404, which indicates that a record could not be found. Depending on the status the API responds to us, we can display a custom page. You have seen that in action when you were looking for a non-existing page on a website. Then you get a 404 displayed, no matter what page you were looking for. So to sum up, the state page tags in Bravo allow us to define different pages for certain events. Those events are defined by the status of the response we get from the API. Let's go ahead and implement the tags into Figma. This won't be too complicated because the magic happens in Bravo automatically. The tag consists of three parts. State, being the tag name, then the actual state and a name. We're going to start off by adding the default tag to our default page. Now it's important to choose a name. This name represents a group of different page states. In this example, we're going to call it list request. The name doesn't really matter. The only important thing is that you choose the same name for all of these state pages. Only if the name is exactly the same, Bravo will know which pages to group together. Next, we're going to add the tag for the empty state to our empty state page. Remember that the name has to stay the same. The empty state is triggered when Bravo receives an empty array as response. So it's not a fully empty response, it's just an empty array. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same for the error state. The error state is also something that could happen to our list request. So we're going to add the name list request like we did in the other tags as well. The error page will be displayed when an error is received. So if it's neither a okay request nor an empty request. This already brings us to the most interesting of these state tags, because you can even customize this to your own status code. Since you can add a custom number here for the status, you have much more possibilities to differentiate between different events. An example would be to have the 404 code here and then go to a this couldn't be found page. But if the response is a 401, you could go to a different page. For example, you're not logged in yet. Maybe you can already tell where I'm going with this. When you can control those status codes, you can send the user to whatever you like based on a condition. And that's exactly why we have an inspiration section here at the end of the video. But before we have a look at more use cases, let's go back into Figma. These pages work like most pages, so you can link them to other pages, but you can also let other pages link to them. I would highly advise you to make a nice looking general error page. Even if you don't expect an error, something could happen. For example, the server is down temporarily. In that case, you could have a nice custom error screen that doesn't throw users off. If you don't have that, Bravo's default error state will be displayed. Some apps and websites are even known for their cool error pages. If you get bored, I've linked an article with some nice inspirations below. Before we jump into Bravo, why don't you consider subscribing so you don't miss any of these cool feature walkthroughs. Here in Bravo, we're going to import our Figma file like we normally do. What's cool is that our state pages work out of the box, so you don't need any binding. But make sure to bind an API somewhere in your app, otherwise you won't get any status responses. And with no status responses, no state pages. To test if the state pages are displayed correctly, you need to go through all statuses that you have pages for. 
if you're using something like Airtable, you can't just decide, okay, this time I want to get a 203 as a response status. If you would still like to test if that status code would be working, you can go to a service like httpstat.us. With this service, you can decide which status code you want to receive. Just insert it for the request you're using in your default page and open Bravo Vision to see how Bravo will react. If you're building a custom API, it might be useful to have a look at tools like Postman or Hopscotch, where you can have a detailed look into your responses. Here you could check, for example, if you actually get an empty array for the empty state page. Additionally, these tools always let you know which status code was returned. I already teased earlier in the video that this could be used to create some sort of conditional visibility. So let's have a look at some of the possibilities. To give you some inspiration, let me show you two of my own apps that I created with Bravo. This app is supposed to show guides that always have a text and an image, and they go through multiple pages. At the end of the guide, you see this end screen, which shows that you succeeded, and it lets you go back to the first page. The guides all have different lengths, that means that I don't know if the end screen will be displayed after the 6th page or after the 12th page. This is why I'm checking on every page if there's still a page to the guide. If there's not, the page will be replaced by the end screen. In order to do that, I wrote a little script which basically just requests Airtable and sees if there's still a page for this guide to be displayed. If there isn't, it returns an arrow leading the user to the end screen. Another thing that you can see here is how the names play together. I always only have one default screen and one arrow screen for one name. Then I go to the next number. I have to do that because one arrow page can only relate to one default page. So these arrows are basically all the same, but they belong to a different default page. This here is an internal tool, which displays jobs. You can see that the default screen displays all active jobs. But if there are no active jobs, I tell the user that and additionally display this button. Carla Fernandez uses state pages inside of her favoriting app to display a welcoming page if the user has not selected any favorites yet. The full tutorial on how she set it up is linked in the description. She also uses state pages in her fitness app. Here, the response status indicates which exercise is to be done next. It even allows her to display a page tailored to her user when an exercise was completed successfully. The video shown here is also linked in the description. You could also use the state pages to show a different page for a different user role. An example would be to check in your user database if this user is a member. And if he or she is, you can return a 204 or whatever number you like. And depending on that number, you display a page only for members. Another example from the top of my head would be to include a state page inside of your signup process. Depending on the status of the user, you can display a different page. Then with every step the user takes, you update that status inside of your database. Do you know of any other implementations? Let me know in the comments, or even if you have a question about the previous examples. You see that this is a powerful tool, so I encourage you to try some things out. As always, I have linked the Figma file that we used in this episode below. This time you can even get it in the sample app section of Bravo, where you can import it directly. I appreciate that you made it this far. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for a new episode of Build It With Jonas next Tuesday. Bye.